This is what my mom said. I didn't really I just love its aura, you know? I've been oh, okay. since my parents would always be playing like these. I used to cry for no reason when I, I was... I try to convey before. the emotion more than the And my mom was actually a singer She well. says to me, yeah. you were warming up your That's voice. That's probably where I got my music gene from. I literally need to make music to not go insane. That's what keeps me going. I don't think I have a sense of a path in life. Music is the thing I love for sure. I want something to be deposited that can last a lifetime. I always knew this is what I wanted to do, but in high school, I realized if I wanted to make it in this industry, I would need to take it seriously. So from that point on, music became my world. Learning what I needed for a quality studio and not hesitating to upgrade when need be, it grew pretty quickly, going from a terrible mic and computer setup to a fully functioning machine. It's efficient, but it still has that professional yet homey feel. Right now, my apartment is literally just a studio with a bed in the corner. I'm pretty new to Fargo Moorhead. Before I came up here, I came from southern Minnesota, but my roots are in New England. I came here to be a part of MSUM's EIT department, which is the best music production program in Minnesota. I had a lot of high hopes coming here, and I met a lot of amazing people and talented musicians, but eventually, I fell into the wrong friend group. A really toxic one. I Wish I Had Friends was written in one night. One hour, actually. It was written on a night when my friends were supposed to hit me up to go to a party, like we had done time and time again, but this time they never did, and they went without me. Which was a trend I had started to see with them, but that doesn't change how much it hurt. So to not waste the night and let them have that power over me, I just sat down and I wrote the song, I Wish I Had Friends. That was the inspiration for it, but that's not quite what the song is about. The song is about an obsession with social media, thinking everyone else's lives are better than your own because you only see their highlights, caring more about follower count than actual true relationships. For me though, it'll always remind me of that night. I dream of big venues, bright lights, and loud crowds. But what people don't know is how quiet I actually am. It takes a lot of preparation before a show. I need to be alone, which is something I rarely ever get to do. The only way I'm able to process it all is to just remind myself everything will be fine once you're on that stage. With every experience, I'm never fully prepared until I do it. And even then, I'm still not prepared. But you never know what you can do until you do it. I like acts of bravery. That's just how creativity works for me. You're pushing yourself into it sometimes. I'm a noise artist. That's my primary thing. It's just sounds. Everyone's is a little different. Noise artists meet in DIY spaces, oftentimes basements like Seagrave Studios. In the noise scene, there's this expectation of vulnerability. It's the only no judgment zone I've ever encountered that holds true to no judgment. And the whole mood of the place, there's this feeling of doom, but you always survive. I don't shower in the winter. For a while, my path was music. I had a band when I was 15, just for like one show, and then I got kicked out of the band. We played at our friend's girlfriend's house while her parents were out of town.
It was pretty casual, but a lot of people showed up. I had vibrato not because I tried to, but because I was shaking so much. And then her dad found out. We got in so much trouble. When it comes to music, I don't really know where my ideas come from, but I usually try to create when I'm in a mood. I like to feel the weight of whatever I'm feeling and the weight of what everyone else is feeling too. I love where my thoughts take me, even when I'm sad. Sometimes I don't go In the winter, when it's all quiet and bleak, is when it gets really hard for me. February is about winter depression, but there was so much going on when I wrote that song. I was in a bad long distance relationship that I had to end when I found out my boyfriend was cheating on me. I didn't have a car, and I would walk all the way to work and back on the icy sidewalks downtown. I was staying in this sort of attic that I tried to make look cute. It was just a miserable place to live. And then I had bats. I wound up getting bit by a bat. One day I just lost it. I sat in my bathroom and cried for a while. And then a tune got stuck in my head, so I had to write it down. Those notes, the steps of the guitar you hear, they're sort of like the feeling of walking back and forth every day. Like this heavy, trudging, but almost mockingly beautiful depression. And when I wake up, Sometimes I don't wake up I feel like someone else is child or person I am told to manage Who cannot help themselves At this point in time, I'm fine with living this lifestyle where I can explore lots of different art forms and there's no pressure to hone in on one. I can express my happiness in one form, and I can express my sadness in another. One of the reasons why I got into noise art is because it helped with dealing with my panic attacks. So I don't see myself just focusing on music. I used to think I didn't have a path, especially not a path towards being a big musician. Activism and art are the two things I'm going to keep trying to do, but my real dream would be to continue helping community spaces, like worker-owned venues and stuff like that. I think community building is my path in life. I'm pretty happy with not going up. I love being on the road and seeing how flat this place is. The clouds are so much closer here. I'm originally from Chicago, South Side. But whenever I'm traveling and someone says, where are you from? I always say Fargo. I finished off junior and senior year in South Fargo not knowing where I was going in life. But everyone around me was getting accepted into this college and that college. I felt discouraged, left out, like dude, what am I doing? But I knew I loved music. I always questioned what I was doing, skipping school, going to gigs, and spending all my time with my guitar. But I never lost my love for it, never. When I was still in Illinois, 13 or 14 years old, I remember praying to God like, I know there's more to you than this holy thing this thing that's out of arm's reach. Many people are like, there's God and then there's us. And that's true, but it's not only like that. I feel that way about audiences too. I don't like to keep people out of arm's reach. Like at the end of the day, it's just me and my acoustic guitar. I like to keep a level playing field between me and the audience. We need each other. If you weren't here, I would just be playing to some empty seats. 
And if I wasn't here, you wouldn't have anyone to listen to. It's a mutual thing. No one's more important than anyone else. Long nights of ashes and smoke, crib skies. Away from the northern lights. A thousand miles away, I can hear the city cry. Waiting on my silver line. When I first started out, I was just trying to support my family. And the success was sort of this underlying thing. But now, I definitely want to go as far as I can go. I was talking with God and asking him, how does competition work? Because in the world we live in, you can't compete without putting someone else down. I don't try to think like that. One song can be different from another or preferred over the other, but it's not just better. God created competition, but people created the need to idolize the result of competition. We worship the winner instead of focusing on using the results to better ourselves. Now after talking to God, I fully believe, what's the point of doing something if you don't want to be the best at it? I might not be the winner in everyone's eyes, but I can use the end result of the competition to help myself and the kingdom of God. At the end of the day, I can only go as far as I can with whatever God has planned. I wrote waiting based on the question, are you always up there watching, waiting for me to make a decision that you know I'm going to make? In the song, I personify God as the stars because it's hard for us to comprehend a being that's always been there. The closest thing we have is the stars, this thing that we can actually see. I wonder what you're thinking way up there. How does it feel to be the one that's watching never makes a sound? I wonder what you're thinking way up there. Are you watching over me? Are you I truly believe that we're supposed to live fantastic lives. We don't have to give that up based on where we're from, what kind of music we make, who we are, what we believe. When people see me perform, I want them to think, wow, this dude is just like me. And I am. I'm a part of this community just like everyone else. And no matter where I go, I'll always have that. You never I love Fargo. I really do. I love how artistic this area is. Pretty much everywhere you go, there are murals, sculptures, and other stuff to look at. There's a big art scene and a big countercultural movement. There's a lot to stick around for. Oh, oh, oh.